perspective and world view good afternoon everybody what you are about to hear is the fusion of heart mind and soul and i am your host of open up the doors andy white i want to welcome everybody from all across the fruited plain and all around the spherical globe thanks for tuning in for this week's brand new edition of open up the doors and please do me a favor let me know if you're listening i am streaming live over on my open up the doors facebook page over at facebook.com slash faith fm 91.7 so join in the conversation over there leave me some comments and some thoughts as the program progresses and let me know where you are listening from i see a bunch of people over there already some of my faithful listeners god bless you guys thanks a lot for joining in please uh share Share this uh, Facebook live stream into your streams and invite people over to open up the doors. If you are outside of the Faith FM uh, broadcast area, the best way to listen to Faith FM 24-7 is to download the free Faith FM app over at the HamptonsChristian.com website. Hamptons Christian Fellowship is the uh, home church of uh, the radio, the Faith FM and if you go on over to their website, we are streaming there, obviously, across the Internet via, uh, the, you know, the, the Internet streaming. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll get that out. And But anyway, you can download the free app over there for Faith FM. We have it for the Android. We have it for the Apple, whatever your platform is. So uh, go on over there if you are, you know, it's, it's the best way to listen, again, if you're outside of the, the radio area over there. If you'd like to... Uh, correspond with me more fully, more privately regarding anything about Open Up the Doors, you can email me at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. That's ajwhite777 at iCloud.com if you would like to correspond with me. And as always, I have a lot on my plate and a lot to get to, so I'm going to get to it. But by way of just breaking breaking open the... Uh, the uh what, what do i want to say <laughs> jumping in off the diving board let me start by saying this you know i got so much serious stuff here and uh, i was almost wondering where to begin because there's just so much to share but you know folks the world the world is going the way of all that's been written of it but yet to see it happening is still quite shocking on many levels I hear many say, as I uh, browse around the Internet, as I browse around social media, I see many comments and I hear many people say that nothing shocks them anymore. And yet every day it seems like there's something happening in the culture that indeed still shocks us a little bit more than what shocked us the day before. And it raised the question in me this week as I was thinking about these things. Are you suffering from culture shock yet? You know, we use that term culture shock oftentimes when we're visiting 
some place we've never gone before and the, where things are done differently, languages are different, customs are different, traditions are different, food is different, everything is different. I remember my daughter when she was young, she did a, she did a DTS and a, and a mission trip in Ukraine for almost a year and she, she came home uh, with a real bad bout of having gone through culture shock. Um, that's another story, but it's what I want to kind of deal with today. Culture shock. Uh, uh, the, the, the dictionary definition for culture shock is the feeling of disorientation experienced by someone who is suddenly subjected to, the, to an unfamiliar culture, a way of life, or a set of attitudes. And like I said a moment ago, it seems like every day I wake up, I'm like subjected to an unfamiliar culture because it's changing so fast and so many things that are truly shocking are going on in this culture. And just when you thought, as I said a moment ago, that nothing could shock you anymore, Just when you thought it was safe to go out your front door again. This decaying culture gets worse and worse. There comes, just when you thought nothing could shock you, here comes along the zombie cannibal performance. Something I came across this past week. And like I said, every time I say nothing shocks me anymore, well, something else does. Because the cultural zeitgeist keeps drilling further and further and further down into the depths of hell. That's what's going on. And something, I, I came across something this past week that uh, was really from the depths of hell. It was, it was horrific. And I saw this video that's been going around YouTube could be going around Facebook. A video surfaced last week on Halloween. Of course it was Halloween, but regardless, because this person that was doing this stuff kind of dresses this way all the time. But this video surfaced of a drag queen. Folks, I'm not, it's a good thing this is a radio show and I can't show you the video. I, you know what? I don't even know if I would show you the video because it was brutal and it was disgusting. This drag queen sitting at a bar in New York City was simulating the death and dismemberment and cannibalism of a baby. And as I said, I watched the video and it was it was beyond disturbing. It was beyond shocking. It was beyond repugnant. It was truly demonic in every sense of of the word and a drag queen known as and I'm not even going to say the person's name I'm not going to give them any more publicity than they've already gotten on the internet but this drag queen can be seen sitting on a bar as Keisha's song Cannibal plays in the background I never heard the song Cannibal honestly but apparently this was all pre-planned it was something to really shock people but this drag queen, she's where she, he, I'm going to call it what it is. This drag queen, he, is wearing a costume that features a replica of a pregnant woman, pregnant belly. And he begins to stab at his belly with a knife, tearing it open and reaching inside. When he removes his hand, it's coated in fake blood, but it looked pretty real. He reaches inside again to his belly that he cut open with this knife. And this time he pulls out what is simulated guts. And he picks up a glass and squeezes a load of the mock blood and the guts into a glass and pours it into his mouth with blood dripping and drooling down his face and blood all over his, 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 his outfit. Fake blood, but nevertheless, it was horrific to watch this thing. It was, it was like I said, it was repugnant. And people in the bar are clapping and cheering him on. And then this demon-possessed drag queen pulls out a small plastic baby out of his stomach 
and begins to lick it while dancing and mouthing the words to Keisha's song, Cannibal. After a few minutes of this debauchery, he picks up the glass and drinks the blood out of it. He then pours the rest of the glass of blood over his head and then proceeds to pull more simulated guts out of his stomach and squeezing the blood out of them and unto himself. It was truly disgusting. And the grand finale has the drag queen taking the plastic baby, twisting its head off and dancing with it and licking its face and swing it, swinging it around his head. I have to tell you that watching this video was truly horrifying. It left me in a state of just stunned disbelief. The people in the bar, as I said, were laughing and clapping and cheering him on in this macabre act. I saw the comments on the video, and many just saw this as another quote-unquote shock art performance. And that's what really is very disturbing, folks. That people could, like, like in the days of Rome, when people were literally being torn apart in the Colosseums by animals, and the gladiators were, were performing unto literal death, the people in ancient Rome were clapping and cheering it was debauchery and cultural uh, annihilation to the max. And that's what we're beginning to see here in America. We are in the midst of a cultural holocaust, my friends. Consciences that are seared through with the hot iron to be able to sit there and witness this and applaud it and, and cheer it on. And one commentator on Facebook posted in the comments section you know, laughing my butt off. They didn't say butt, of course, but I'm going to keep it clean here. This is Christian radio. Laughing my butt off. It's just an edgy performance, man. Put down the pitchforks, you Jesus nutbags. I swear you all think everything that offends you is a sign of the apocalypse. But, folks, this was beyond offensive. Oh, yeah, it was offensive, but it was beyond offensive. And quite Honestly, this stuff and this behavior is a sign of the coming apocalypse, not because it offends me or it offends us, but because it does offend almighty God and God will not be mocked. And regardless of the fact, my friends, and here's where I'm going with this, regardless of the fact that we are a nation filled with mega churches, we are witnessing a cultural holocaust sweeping across America like we've never seen before. In spite of the millions of dollars spent on the great American gospel enterprise, in spite of famous church leaders boasting in their supposed impact, we are experiencing the most rapid moral decline in America's history. I just read a report, a poll, I shared it on a broadcast I think two weeks ago where atheism and godlessness have grown exponentially in our country. And tragically, because they are driven by a desire for popularity, position, and power, or maybe because they simply want to avoid controversy. In fact, there was a poll that said that. A lot of pastors today aren't addressing these issues because they want to avoid the controversy. These pastors... And church leaders have willfully fallen silent to this cultural holocaust that is shipwrecking faith and morality in America. They fall in silent. But my friends, I cannot and I will not and I will not remain silent. Because when a land and a people celebrate and rejoice in the shedding of innocent blood with mockery, when a land of, and a people celebrate and rejoice in sexual deviancy and depravity, when a land and a people can countenance a transvestite homosexual engaging even by way of simulation an evil, wicked, satanic practice of drinking blood, in simulating the sacrificing of a baby and simulating the eating of it, this quote-unquote show, this air quotes, this act, 
this video that is going around the internet, this drag queen, knowingly or not, is the poster child for every evil, wicked, and hellish abomination that God has judged peoples, cities, and nations before us. Like the scripture says that the that the that Sodom and Gomorrah was set forth as, a, as an example of God's judgment for those who would act this way in future generations. But as I said a moment ago, every day we wake up, and it seems like the world today is radically different than it was just yesterday. Things that were so, you know. <laughs> Things that were just so very normal and taken for granted as self-evident common sense and reality. Well, that was yesterday, but today there's a new reality, which really isn't a reality at all. But you're not allowed to question the new reality. Oh, do you not know that you're not allowed to question the new reality? You're not allowed to, to question the fantasies of other people because you might offend them. But it's okay if you're offended. With, with the debauchery and the evil and the wickedness and the abominations. That's okay. But don't, you're not allowed to question if somebody wants to, you know, call themselves uh, by something other than they would actually really are. For instance, this transgender biological male recently won an, uh, an award with the, N, the NCAA. The headline reads, uh, Biological Male, biologically male, NCAA runner, named conferences female athlete of the week. An article in the Daily Caller. This Big Sky conference named the, okay, I'm sorry, here's what the article says, the report says, the Big Sky conference named University of Montana runner June Eastwood, who is a biological male who identifies as a transgender woman, they awarded this guy the cross-country female athlete of the week. This was a few weeks ago. Now, this guy Eastwood had previously competed on the University of Montana's men's team the year before, or a year and a half before. He had already competed as a man. Now, because he decided he wanted to identify as a woman, he was running with the women's team. Maybe because he was doing so badly on the men's team, maybe he came in last place. I don't know. But hey, how can you go from last place to winning an award? Simply say, hey, I'm not a guy. I'm not a dude. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl. I'm going to join the girls team. And all of a sudden, he goes from being a loser to being, a, in his mind, a winner. Still a loser, if you ask me, but that's beside the point. I won't go there. But the University of Montana's athletic director cited NCAA policy and explaining just why Eastwood was competing on the women's team. You see, the NCAA allows male runners who identify, male runners who identify as transgender women to compete in women's athletics after suppressing testosterone levels for a full calendar year. However, folks, here's the problem with this. Well, there's lots of problems with it, of course. Scientific research has shown that male athletes retain competitive advantages over female athletes. Even after suppressing testosterone. Having any bouts of culture shock yet? I know some of this stuff doesn't shock us anymore. Some of this stuff like this, this has been going on for such a while now that we've, be, we, this is exactly the point. We've become almost uh, immune to this. We've almost become anesthetized to these reports now because, because they're just becoming normal. It's the new culture. It's the new culture. But it's shocking. But you know what? When are we going to stand up? When are, when are women's sports... And I know some of them are, actually. But one of the people going to stand up and say, enough. Enough is enough. He is not a she. He is a dude. 
Growing one's hair long and changing your name does not change your DNA. It doesn't change your chromosomes, nor your muscular density. This is pathologically insane that this is being accepted and that colleges would be accepting this, this insanity. It's utterly and completely unfair to the female contestants. And I know there are some who are trying to fight back and taking it to the courts because it is unfair to female contestants. Despite what some of the science deniers would tell you, despite what some of the biological, biology deniers would tell you, there are differences between men and women, folks. Sorry, there just is. Well, I'm not sorry. I'm glad there is. I'm glad God made us male and female personally. But there are differences. And when we begin to try and, in our fantasies, try and negate those differences or say that those differences really don't exist, not only are we mocking God's creation, but we're professing ourselves to be wise and we're just becoming a bunch of fools. It's insanity. But welcome to the new culture shocking as it may be welcome to the new normal as shocking as it may be but when is enough going to be enough and when is the pulpit going to stand up with boldness with boldness and say no sorry this is wrong this is sin this is insanity this is an abomination i had somebody comment the other day in one of my facebook stream one of my facebook posts saying that they had gone to i didn't know who the person was and it was it was out of state they didn't tell me the name of the church they didn't tell me any of the particulars other to, other than to say that they had gone to their pastor re, uh, regarding uh, a particular cultural issue they didn't even tell me what the issue was it might have been this type of an issue but they went to their post their pastor in this church and they said you can you please uh, address this from the pulpit can you please talk about what the bible has to say about this particular issue and the pastor told this congregant one of his sheep that th that they would not address that from the pulpit because people would be upset and offended and would leave the church even though they actually agreed that it was wrong, even though they agreed with the woman's concern, they wanted to avoid the controversy. I don't know who the church was. I don't know who the pastor was. But if I ever met him, I'd say, get out of the pulpit, man. Get out of the pulpit. If you want to avoid controversy, well, what are you preaching the gospel for? If you want people to, 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 to hug you and love you all the time, then what are you preaching the gospel for? Because Jesus said they're going to hate you. This world will hate you. Jesus said they hated me, they're going to hate you. And they hate me because I tell them, I testify to them that their deeds are evil. So I'm not exactly sure what gospel you're preaching from your pulpit, my friend. But you really need to get on your face before God and decide who, who you're going to obey, God or man. Who you're going to fear, God or man. I can't stand this stuff when I hear it, when I see it. But we are engaging our nation, our society, our world is engaging in, in, in a cultural annihilation and the pulpit in large measure. The pulpits in America, the mega churches in America don't want to address it. They'd rather talk about uh, self-help and self-esteem and building up your, 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 your outer man instead of strengthening your inner man, putting on your, 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 your best face now, your best life now. Oh, I won't mention any names. But it's no longer a culture war, my friends. <laughs> We've been talking about a culture war for quite a long time. What we're witnessing now has gone to another level. We're witnessing a cultural holocaust. And you know, like I said, I've got a stack of stuff today that I wish I could get to, but time is not on my side. But stick around. I'll be right back. I do need to take a break. But please come right back and invite your friends to tune in to this edition of Open Up the Doors. Here's Mark Fauna with a tune called Conflict. And that's what we are in. We are in a cultural conflict that's becoming a cultural holocaust. I'll be back in a moment. Stick around.
talk fauna and conflict. Conflict. That's what we're in. But hey, he was doing some really nice guitar work in that. I always appreciate really good guitar work. Hey, welcome back, folks. Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors here. If you're just tuning in on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Epic, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And I'm here penetrating the unseen powers of darkness by simply speaking the truth of light and the light of truth. Sending powers and principalities into frothy fits of frenzy as well as scary carnival clowns. Yes, folks, it's been quite a while since I've done a theater of the absurd report. But when you hear the sound of the carnival carousel, when you hear the cranking of the melodious circus barrel organ, that can only mean one thing. It's time for a theater of the absurd news update. Real news stories that would make the Carnival Freak Show jealous with envy. So step right up and give an ear to this week's Theater of the Absurd. Theater of the Absurd news updates are brought to you by Eight Clowns and a Mini Cooper, LLC. Well, here we go. (laughs) It's been a while since I've done a Theater of the Absurd. But so much for biology, facts, and womanhood. Like I shared in the last block about that guy who won a, f- a female award for running with for running against and competing against the woman but here we got some more absurdities because take it just take this to the bank folks true feminism is officially dead in this world all these things that that the feminists fought for and worked for have gone up in smoke in this new culture that we're dealing with True feminism is officially dead, and the world has gone completely insane. Here's this theater of the absurd news update. Here's the headline. A birth coach over in uh, Britain, a birth coach was hounded out of her industry charity named Doula after transgender activists branded her Facebook message claiming only women can have babies and call that offensive only women can have babies is an offensive statement Lindsay McCarthy Calvert 45 was forced to resign from her spokesperson role at Doula UK because again the transgender rights activists triggered an investigation into this mother of four her offensive Facebook post read I am a woman an adult human female and after Doula, the charity that she worked for, investigated, they found that the Post breached their equality and diversity guidelines. Yes, folks, calling herself a woman, an adult human female, was deemed inappropriate. It's okay if you're a guy and you want to claim... You're a girl because you grew your hair long and wear a dress. That's perfectly okay. But a biological woman who says I am a woman, an adult human female, no, 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 no. That's deemed inappropriate. But it gets worse. It gets really, really worse. How could this woman have this unmitigated goal to claim that only women can have babies? <gasps> Gasp! My ears are bleeding. Only women can have babies. (laughs) Yes, this is why it's called the theater of the absurd. Lindsay McCarthy Calfrit, she's 45 years old, was forced to step down, as I said a moment ago, as being a spokesperson for saying that only women can birth children. A doula, and I'll be honest with you folks, I had to ask my wife what a doula is. Apparently, it's kind of like a midwife. A doula is a trained non-medical companion to guide and help women as they give birth. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a midwife. She's quoted in the report as saying, I am angry and sad. I can imagine she would be with her life's work. And it was charity. I am angry and sad, she said. I was effectively ostracized for saying I am a woman, and so are my clients. Well, yes, because only women can have babies. Oops. 
I can't say that. I have been very disappointed by Dula UK's response. I'm sure you have been, because no one's got guts anymore. No one's got the courage anymore to stand up against this foolishness. I've been very disappointed by Dula UK's response. The leadership are paralyzed by not wanting to upset transgender rights activists. They have fallen over themselves to acquiesce to their demands. And like I said in the first block, the trend of these things, folks, it's, it's beginning to have a snowballing effect. The, 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 the avalanche fell off the cliff and the, the snowballs are increasing in speed. And this whole type of a thing is just building up and building up. And the trend of caving into these people is rapidly increasing. For instance, and this was taken, I took this out of this report in the British newspapers, came out of the, uh, the Daily Mail. But apparently this is a, a, a product for women's uh, sanitary pads over there in Britain. It's, the article said the makers of always sanitary towels removed the female Venus symbol from its packaging after complaints from trans men. You want me to read that again? <laughs> Do I need to read that again? The makers of always sanitary towels removed the female Venus symbol. I guess it was their logo, but they removed it from packaging after complaints from trans men. Again, over there, across the pond in the UK, Cancer Research, another charity, I would imagine anyway, Cancer Research UK dropped the word. You ready for the word they, that they dropped? They dropped the word woman from its smear test campaign. You know, women get pap smears to test for cervical cancer. It's one of the things women have to do because they're different than men and men have to do other things because we're different than women. But they dropped the word woman from this pap smear test campaign Instead, saying the screening was, quote, relevant for everyone age 25 through 64 with a cervix. Well, last time I heard, only women have cervix. Last time I heard. Notice I said last time I heard. I didn't say last time I checked because I'm not a gynecologist, so I can only go by what I've heard. <laughs> and what I've heard is only women have cervixes. In response to the criticism she was receiving, she was getting she was getting blasted and lambasted and bombarded on her Facebook page, Mrs. McCarthy Calvert. In response to the criticism she was receiving, she posted a photograph on Facebook of a negligee clad woman somersaulting underwater with the wording, quote, I am not a cervix owner. I am not a menstruator. I am not a feeling. I am not defined by wearing a dress and lipstick. I am a woman, an adult female. Women birth all the people and make up half the population. Bam, 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 ding, 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 ding. That's what she posted that caused such a ruckus there over in the UK. A Facebook follower accused her of using, quote, absolutely disgusting language. She used absolutely disgusting language by saying she was a woman and by saying that only women have babies. How disgusting of you. And then this person added, quote, you seem to be forgetting that not only women birth children. Okay. I don't know what planet you're on, but okay. Therefore, Dula found that McCarthy's post breached their equality and diversity guidelines and pressured Mrs. McCarthy Calvert to resign. Yes, friends, welcome to the theater of the absurd, where the insanity has become the new reality, and the culture shock is very real. People are losing their jobs, their careers. There are places and positions in various organizations and companies, all because they hold to what is true reality. Think about this, folks. Think about where this culture is heading. Where is all this going and how is it going to end? 
Well, like that one drag queen unwittingly stated that I shared in the first block, y'all think the apocalypse is coming because of this stuff. Newsflash, it is. Jesus said, when you see all these things begin to happen, look up, your redemption draws near, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot, because lawlessness will increase. Jesus said to Matthew, so you also, when you see all these things, a whole lot of different things coming together, he said, know that it is near, at the doors. Behold, my friends, as James said, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Oh, do we need suffering, long-suffering and patience in this, in this uh, cultural annihilation that we are witnessing. But James says, we count them blessed to endure. And that's what we need to focus. That's what we need to do, folks. We need to endure. We need to endure. Because James goes on to say, you have heard of the perseverance of Job. We are called to persevere. Jesus said, "Who he, he who endures to the end will be saved. This denial and annihilation of reality that is going on in every stratum of society is leading to a cultural holocaust, my friends, that only a remnant will survive through. And they will only survive. You and, all, you and I will only survive because we have kept our eyes fixed upon Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Don't believe the hype! He is a newsboys with escape. One day the great escape will be here. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back for his bride. What we are doing here on Faith FM and on Open Up the Doors, the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. If you are just tuning in, this is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Epic, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And yes, please, if you would like to partner with us, please visit the HamptonsChristian.com website, and and uh, we could always, we always can use and always appreciate uh, your 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 donations, your love offerings, whether it's a one-time offering or whether uh, you want to sign on as a as an underwriter for even this broadcast. I don't I don't uh, uh, ask all that often, but we could always use uh, sponsors. We could always use underwriters here for whatever program. Or for the for the Faith FM as a whole, this uh, broadcast open up the doors in particular. I would love your support if you're able to do that. But again, welcome back everybody, and I am streaming live here over on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page. If you're just joining in over at uh, d- Facebook.com/slash Faith FM ninety one point seven. That's Facebook.com/slash uh, Faith FM ninety one point seven. One of the things that I'd like to share before I get into some of my closing thoughts for the day is that um, if you could go on over and visit my YouTube channel, uh, go over, you know, just go over to YouTube or Google it, uh, open up the doors, YouTube, Andy White, open up the doors and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that very, very much if you could do that. The, 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 uh, we want to increase the audience. We want to increase our, our effectiveness. We want to increase our outreach to people. It's all about reaching people with the truth, with with the gospel. And I cover a lot of different topics. Uh, cover a lot of different things. If you go over to the uh, my YouTube channel, you'll see all kinds of different. Uh, topics I've covered through the years, and also in the liked section, different videos that I've liked, as well as my own videos from these broadcasts. All these broadcasts are uploaded to YouTube. They're edited down. The music's taken out. Some of the commercial stuff is taken out. Not commercials, but announcements. We are commercial free. We can't charge uh, for commercials. We can't charge for... That's the way it works with a nonprofit. We can take sponsorships. It's kind of... It gets kind of a little bit of semantical, but... That's because it's it's a free will love offering. We can't charge anything, and we don't. You're free to listen, whether you whether you support us financially or not. I just want you to let you know that that we could use it. That's for sure. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Pastor Doug was just telling me a few moments ago that there are some decisions he's got to make about about some 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 things that have come up with paying the the leases and the rents and stuff for for the for the uh, broadcast towers and. 
you know, there's different things he's got to decide on, and it's going to, it's going to, you know, the rent's going up, so to speak, and if if they move someplace else, they're going to need to spend a whole ton of money, and he's we need to pray for him. He asks for prayer about what to, what to do in relationship, in regard, I should say, to this particular need at the radio station. So if you're able to uh, make a donation of any size, please do. And I went from from that to my YouTube channel and back to that. It's all together. We're all in this together. We're we're in a culture war together. We're in a spiritual war together. And we all have a different a different part to play and and I you know, I just want to put that out there before you and, and ask for your prayer support, your financial support, um your your all your support that, that you're able to to give. Well, I've been talking about some of the really nasty, nasty stuff that's going on in our culture. But you know what? There are rays of sunshine and hope out there that is piercing the darkness. And I don't want to leave this broadcast on a depressing note because I'm not depressed about this stuff. I'm just reporting it and letting you know what's going on. I know many of you already know what's going on, but I want to address it. Like I said, I see, I hear it all the time from folks that that they're not hearing this stuff in their churches. And like I shared a moment ago with this one this one person who went to their pastor and said, you know, you need to share this stuff, and he said he didn't want to. Well, that's what I, I thank God for this broadcast where I'm able to share about the stuff that needs to be uh, shared upon to equip you, to inform you, and to equip you to fight the good fight of faith on every and any level. But there are some, some victories that are going on in the culture war, and I want to share some of them before this broadcast uh, wraps up because, again, I don't want to end on a depressing note. I want to end on a on a glorious note because an, because an extraordinary th- an extraordinary thing took place last week beneath the rotunda of the United States Capitol. F- listen to this, former, and I want to emphasize the word former. X, in other words, they're not living that lifestyle anymore. Former. They were changed by the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm definitely emphasizing this because we're being told by the zeitgeist out there that 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 these people can't change. It's amazing. It's amazing. These same people that talk about gender fluidity, these same people that talk about you have a right to to claim that you're a woman if you're a guy or claim that you're a guy if you're a woman. These same people are telling us that gays and lesbians and transgenders can't change. They were born that way. They can't change. These are the same people. I mean, the cognitive dissonance is utterly mind-boggling. That's why I'm calling it culture shock, because um, I won't go there. Anyway, let me get back to this article, because I digressed. But former gay and lesbian and transgender men and women met at at the Capitol building, and they had a prayer meeting, and a worship meeting, a worship time, somewhat spontaneously, inside the Capitol building in the rotunda. I saw a couple of the videos. I had tears in my eyes. But they repented, and they interceded on behalf of the nation, our nation, for the sins of homosexuality and transgenderism. Yes, my friends, in the U.S. Capitol rotunda, ex-LGBTs, prayed and repented on behalf of the nation for the sins of sexual deviancy and depravity. And this was reported in LifeSite News. And according to LifeSite News, it said that this group, they were part of a group, these, these ex-homosexuals and lesbians and transgenders, transgenders were part of a group which came to Washington to urge members of Congress to oppose the so-called Equality Act. It's probably something I should cover in a not-too-distant future. But they came to oppose the, the Equality Act and to oppose another thing, which I didn't even know was happening, another act that the Democrats are trying to push through called the Therapeutic Fraud Prevention Act that would prevent people from seeking help to escape the LGBT lifestyle. Can you imagine this? The government is trying to put forth an act to stop people from seeking help to change their lifestyles. That's outrageous. I need to look into this, the particulars of this a little bit more. But that's beside the point right now. This group was there to lobby against these these different uh, 
acts, these different legislations that the Democrats are trying to promote. But right before entering into the rotunda, NBC News had published a story with the headline declaring that the group had come to D.C. to, quote-unquote, lobby against LGBTQ rights. But that's not what they were there for. They came to tell their stories to the congressmen and the powers that be of why they were opposing these Equality Acts and particularly the Therapeutic Fraud Prevention Act. They came to tell their stories of how they found healing and fulfillment by rejecting the lies of LGBT ideology and turning to Christ. Bam! But that's precisely the shocking thing the left wants to deny and cover up. The fact that people can be healed, saved, and delivered from from the satanic grip of homosexuality and sexual deviancy. As Paul declared in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, referencing former adulterers and fornicators, homosexuals and sodomites, Paul writes, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And these people were out there having a prayer meeting in the middle of the, of the, of the Capitol building, they said. One person prayed, we repent on behalf of our country for the sins of arrogance, for the sins of sexual deviancy, for the sins that have led us to the place where we are today. One man earnestly prayed as he stood beneath the Capitol dome. Another former homosexual said, we repent for the sin of homosexuality and we repent for the part we played in it. Another woman who had lived once as a lesbian said, was praying, push back the darkness. Another one prayed this, I repent for the lies that we have believed as far as who we are. Prayed a woman who had lived as a man for many years, quote unquote, but now is restored to her true identity. She prayed, Lord, We bought into the lie that you didn't create us good enough, that we should have been something else. Lord, I ask you to continue to drop the scales from the eyes of those who live in the deception of who they are and let them see how they are created in your image and that you did not make mistakes. I ask you to call them out of that lifestyle, call them out of that deception. They prayed this group of people, I watched some of the videos, as I said, they prayed and they pleaded for those who were bound by deception and held captive by the enemy to be set free. Folks, my God still saves, heals, and delivers. We've seen that the last few weeks with Kanye West, who's caused quite a controversy with his conversion. And I'm running out of time. I wanted to bring up a whole bunch of stuff with Kanye. But you see, some of the church seem to be scandalized by the Kanye West conversion. Don't ask me why. But they're going through their own sense, it seems like, of culture shock. Because Kanye's conversion doesn't fit into their playbook somehow. Kanye's conversion isn't in alignment with their paradigm. And yet, just last week, he did a Gospel Sunday event where it was reported that thousands gave their lives to Jesus Christ in Baton Rouge. And of course, we continue to pray that this is the real deal. We continue to pray that these are genuine conversions, not just emotional responses. But that can be said of any and all evangelistic crusades. Even Billy Graham admitted that only 10% of his altar call converts followed through and went on in their faith. It's the parable of the sower, my friends. Jesus never said, and he never implied, that there would be a 100% return on the seed sown. He explicitly explicitly said there wouldn't be. But we're seeing some good things happening in the culture. And I've been playing around with the idea of the culture shock today. But I want to close this broadcast, because I've run out of time, really. But I want to play this clip of one of these former gay guys singing in the rotunda to end this broadcast. Listen to this. This brought tears to my eyes. Can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can be